All right, first of all, definitely thanks everyone for joining the webinar. And uh, today I'll be talking about uh, stream processing in capital markets uh, practical guide. Well, definitely it's not like a capital market data, uh, markets one one. It's not like that kind of uh, webinar, but we definitely want to uh, have you understand, probably better understand how we think about the stream processing in the capital markets and how this technology could work. Uh, help could could will help in different use cases, right? Because for capital market is so big, right? So um okay, yeah, hold a second. Okay. Yeah, some housekeeping items and we can just uh, skip this part. And who I am. Yeah, I'm Ying Jun Wu and I'm a founder of Rising Wave Labs, uh, basically a stream processing company. Uh, before starting company, I was at uh, it was Redshift. So yeah, I've already been repeatedly discussed with, uh, this, yeah, basically introduce myself, but so I will also skip this part. And let's talk about, uh, directly talk about uh, the capital markets, right? So whenever we talk about the capital markets, we talk about the capital markets to your friends, probably you think that we are talking about stock trading. You can probably just uh, do the stock trading in your mobile apps, right? Like yeah, stock uh, Robinhood, like Weibo, and like many others, right? But essentially, capital markets run way more than just the stock trading, and we can essentially buy and sell a lot of stuff, such as stocks, the bonds, the derivatives, the currencies, and many other financial instruments, right? So. What is a capital market? Well, how we define the capital markets? So uh, I probably don't, we will not show uh, a very formal definition, but think about this. There are some investors trying to buy the instruments, right? To buy the stocks, the bonds, and some other uh, financial instruments. Well, some other investor, investors are trying to sell the instruments. So essentially you need to place to to basically to do the exchange, right? Some people will just, uh, I mean, give, uh, will buy the instruments using cash, while some others will sell, right? Will we'll sell the financial instruments, uh, securities to the, uh, to the buyers, right? So where we can buy and sell these instruments, <clears throat> we are selling it well in the capital markets. There are basically two types of capital markets. One is the primary card market, and the other one is the secondary market. The primary market will uh, basically the new, I mean, the new uh, securities uh, issues will all sell for the first time. Where secondary markets could in, uh, include, uh, I mean, I'm just talking about stock trading, but secondary market will is mainly the uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, yeah Nasdaq or some other exchanges, right? The stock exchanges. So in the capital markets, we do have uh, different participants, including the investors like retail i'm a i'm a personally an investor and if you do uh, if you buy and sell stocks or all wholesale stocks you are also an investor right and uh, investors could be anyone who buy and sell securities and uh, there are definitely issuers right and the issuers could be companies could be governments could be yeah probably some other parties and there are also intermediaries such as uh, uh, hedge funds, such as brokerage, and such as exchanges. Today, I will not talk to. But we are focus is capital markets, but we will not. Uh, I mean, uh, discuss well through the. I mean, the investors or issuers perspective because I'm not trying to tell you okay which stock we should sell uh, and which stock we should buy. I mean, it's totally your decision, right? But today, we can focus on the intermediaries, right? So the, how this was stream processing could be used, or the technology could be used um, in certain kind of like uh, participants to help them to trade in the market. So today let's focus on these three parts, the hedge fund, the brokerages and the exchanges. So let's talk about the uh, uh, hedge fund first. So what is a hedge fund? Well, a hedge fund, well, yeah, it's it's an investment for fund that uses the algorithms or machine learning models or 
any other tech uh, or any other um yeah mechanism to identify the trading opportunities and make, make investment decisions right for example in a modern uh, in modern uh hedge fund world well, there are a lot of hedge funds using machine learning algorithms like deep learning i don't know anyone is using lm but well, definitely many people are using deep learning or, or reinforcement learning to do the uh to do the uh to to build the models based on the historical data and then they can and then they can use their model to identify new opportunities right with new the trading opportunities in the light market uh, uh by interesting light market data and make an investment decisions they can buy and sell the stocks well uh, uh stocks or any other financial instruments well yeah based on their algorithms and there are three types of the hedge fund the high frequent trading uh hedge fund and the medium frequent uh the hedge fund doing medium frequent trading and the hedge fund doing the low frequent trading so if we talk about what the low frequent trading hedge fund then basically they trade for uh, as they they are more like okay trade uh, not that frequently they can probably trade every single day or probably several uh once uh, once a week or probably once a month, right? And they typically hold the stocks or instruments for, for pretty long time from, could be for pretty long time, could be days or, 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 or even years, right? And they're, what they look at the signal, how they look at the signals, well, typically they look at what the basically the fundamental, right? Well, all the other all micro-based, Right. Well, the um. Well, in terms of like risks, these guys were more. I mean, for each individual trading opportunity, well, I mean, it could be like high risk, but well, the volume is pretty low, right? We feel, let's say that well, I I purchase ten different stocks, and for every single stock, well, I probably can lose, uh, I probably can earn some money, right? But the total volume is not that big. I will not trade. Uh, I will not trade it probably a thousand times every single day. I will just trade probably once a week. And regarding what about the high frequency trading? High frequency trading is the um, um is totally different from the low frequency trading because well they what they care about well really is basically they trade at um millisecond or late uh, or, or second level latency or even microseconds right, and the uh, they hold the stocks while well, hold the uh, hold the, the <clears throat> security is pretty uh for pretty short period of time and they do arbitrage and the market making to to make money right and the, and the, in terms of the, uh they uh, because where they trade well, uh they trade a lot of stocks probably uh doing probably millions of even tens of million transactions per uh, every single day the risk of every single individual trade uh, uh, trade well, is pretty low, but well, but well, because well, they have pretty high volume, so that's why they can still earn a lot of money or probably lose a lot of money, right? And there are definitely the middle, uh, yeah, middle type, which is the medium frequent trading, which is essentially sitting in between the high frequent trading and the low frequent trading. And for medium frequency trading, it may, mainly does what uh, uh, I mean. Uh, the uh, yeah, medium hours latency is good enough for them, and they probably do the transaction every single day, probably every few hours, and they probably can sell it or or uh, they do probably intraday trading. So that's where they can, um, essentially they, they will hold and uh, they will buy or sell a stock within a day, right? So their their strategy is more like yeah momentum trading right well and it's basically like okay to check whether this whether it is uh based on all kinds of analytics whether they they will try to predict okay whether this stock will probably the price will increase or drop right and uh they probably were not useful uh I mean I do a lot of transactions where they do not really care about the millisecond latency but. In today's talks, because of for stream processing, whenever we talk about stream processing, we know that we care about low latency, right? We care about, well, I mean, if you if you do not really care about low latency, if you say that way, I, I probably can just, uh, I mean, the latency could be as high as a, a day or probably a few hours, then probably you don't need to have stream processing. So obviously stream processing could, well, I, uh, could help in high frequency trading, 
right? It's probably not, we're not help, uh, helping low frequency trading or, me, or even medium frequency trading, but it can definitely have the potential to help the high frequency trading. So let's just focus on the high frequency trading part. So how do we do high frequency trading? Let's say that we are a hedge fund and what do we do? And um, what do we do is that well, typically people will purchase the historic data from different uh, from different well, vendors or data vendors, right? Traditionally, we have the Bloomberg, right? Where everyone knows that. And the not modern days where we have some uh, like uh, web-based or classical cloud-based for the vendors, data vendors, such as uh, Parker, Polygon, and Beta Bando, right? And well, after I purchase uh, the, the, the historic data from these data vendors, I can do a trading. I, I can do analytics, all kinds of analytics and figure out the patterns using all kinds of mechanisms, either statistical ones or probably machine learning based, for example, deep learning based or probably, or probably reinforcement learning based. And just like, uh, just like any other machine learning, um, uh, use cases for well, we use machine learning or, or, or this or hedge fund use machine learning to train the model, right? And then do testing and then to confirm that okay, probably using this model with the online data, I can probably generate the correct signal that can help me make money. That's what they do. And and uh, uh, yeah, basically that, that, that's what we do. So for the historical data, I mean, uh, for the for the analytical part, for the uh, using the historical data, basically that's yeah, we can essentially think about uh, think it like a batch processing, right? No matter whether it's like a statistical, a statistical based or it's machine learning based, we can always consider it to more like a batch based processing. But once we get a model or algorithm and we want to apply to the real world or the or the or the live market data then it's still really different things. Right? I mean, we cannot just use a batch processing. We, because for the Lime data, every single second, we probably have thousands or even tens of thousands of ticks, where the, the, the tick data, uh, yeah, of, or even more if you trade with different, uh, di uh, different asset classes. You have, um, uh, you, you will have data from, uh, from all, all of the, all, the, all, all yeah, from different exchanges, probably different for the, um, yeah, uh, and uh, and the probably different uh, different menus, right? And with the new, with the live data, we ingest the live data into our model or into our algorithm, and then the model and the, or the algorithm can decide okay whether we should buy or sell the security. And once the signal is captured and the decision is made, we will send the signal and we will send the decision or the so-called order, or, 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 or the order to uh, exchange our brokerage, right? To because what the yeah we, I will talk about what the brokerage the difference between the brokerages and exchanges later. But yeah, from this perspective, we can think about okay, once the model generates a signal, we will send the decision. I mean, also also the order to the brokerages and the, the all the exchanges, and then they were yeah the uh, yeah uh, yeah, and then they were either e either uh, either fill or uh, decline or or cure our order. That's what the uh, what the what the hedge fund do, and for the live trading part, well, definitely we use stream processing. But can we just use the conventional stream processing system to do the? I mean, the general so-called general purpose for stream processing to do the live trading. Well, we do see a lot of like yeah, uh, vendors, well, uh, data infra vendors are probably the uh, bloggers or yeah, uh, uh, people uh, talking about, okay, we can probably use the classic stream processing systems to another uh, uh, general purpose stream processing systems to do the live trading. But essentially not the case because, well, I mean, the trading is pretty difficult but, and uh, and uh, and for these guys, well, for in hedge funds, they actually care about for a very low latency. They actually can compete at a microsecond level. If you try want to try to compete in microsecond level, then I think well, most of the uh, in 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 probably most of the cases, you have to think about that. You you uh, oh, yeah, basically compose your own trading system using. C, C++ or probably Rust in modern words. 
And many administrating firms essentially leverage the FPGA or collocation services or direct market data, uh, direct market access to further lower latency in uh, to ensure that okay, we can trade at microsecond level. So that's why, it's, to be honest, well, I mean, it's not quite practical to, to just use a traditional or the general purpose stream processing system to do the, I mean, the live trading part. But definitely, I want to mention that well, for the trading, it does not just have the, it's a, so such a big word that it's, they essentially include two parts. One is so-called pre-trading, and, uh, and the other one is called a post-trading. For per trading, it means that for well, the per trade, well, uh, per trade is well, it all it covers all kinds of activities that occur before a trade or before a, a trade is executed. Well, the, all the uh, well, uh, for post trade, where it essentially covers all the activities that will take place after a trade has been executed, right? But so I uh, here I I'm I mainly talk about the per trade. If you want to use a general purpose stream processing system to do a pre-trade, then it's very challenging because, well, as I just mentioned, uh, high frequency trading, trading firms can compete at a, at a microsecond level, and it's not quite practical to, and they essentially need to uh, write their uh, yeah, own live, uh, live trading system using lower level languages, right? So, and uh, as you just mentioned, well, and these guys will not just uh, need to write their own programming language, uh, write their own live, uh, living, uh, yeah, live, live trading systems. They also need to collocate their services to, to collocate their trading system to the exchange so as to get a, uh, get a get much better latency. Here, I do have a, uh, I do have a chart from the, uh, our friends, Data Bundle. They do, uh, they sell the live market data. And uh, as you can see here, that's what they actually try to optimize the, uh, your service and to, uh, to ensure that you can, you can get the data in single digit microsecond. But well, is it uh is it true that we can not just use any uh general purpose stream processing system to do the I mean the pre trading part? Well, actually, uh, not not exactly the case because well, as I just mentioned, well, essentially there are different asset classes. If you talk about the stock option trading or probably some other yeah hybrid uh, yeah yeah stock market or option trading. Because well, there the volume is so uh so big, we cannot and uh, and uh, the and uh, the yeah the the market is so, uh yeah so volatile. We cannot just like yeah, trading at a probably second level. But if you talk about for some other uh classes uh classes well like uh, asset classes such as the uh, fixed income, uh, and commodity, and it's definitely possible because why? Because well, for fixed income trading, it's, gen uh, it, it's generally more tolerant of a higher latency because we do not really have so many uh, yeah, data within a second and we do not need to make a decision within microseconds. It is okay to make a decision within millisecond or second level latency. Yeah, it is fine. So we do see that where people essentially use a fixing uh, to use a rising wave or some other stream processing systems to do the fixed income trading in the per trading stage. Okay, so okay, if we can use well the stream process general purpose stream processing systems in the pre trade stage for certain kind of trading, then what's the typical use cases? Well, one typical very classic use case is, is uh, data transformation and enrichment. Yeah, uh, there's no surprising at all, at all, right? Because well, a stream processing, one of the biggest well, stream processing use case where is the data transformation and the enrichment. In the stock trading, in the pre-trade pre stage, we can also use the general purpose stream processing system to do the same thing. And why we need to do the data enrichment? Let's think about the use case for that. Okay, we want to, uh, okay. Uh, so typically what do we do is that we will have the, we need to combine the live data with some ref, uh, reference data, right? So such as the currency conversion rate or such as well, uh, or even just a stock symbol or probably the, uh, yeah, or probably some other information to enrich our data, right? In this case, well, I mean, how, to, how, how do we do this? 
a lot of people just, uh, I mean, use or ingest the data into their Kafka. I mean, there are uh, Kafka is just one type of the messaging queues for that system uh, people typically use. And there are some others for it, like Pausa and uh, there are, yeah, definitely there are financial, uh, uh, there are some other messaging, uh, messaging queues uh, technologies that are more financial service focused. But here we just use a Kafka as an example, okay? And in this use cases, we're in the data transformation and enrichment use cases. A lot of people just, well, I mean, ingest the data into their Kafka and then it's writing way to join their, I mean, the live data with your reference data and then dump the results out to some other places, right? And okay, I can give a very concrete example about well, the data transformation and the enrichment. Let's assume that okay, we want to do the. I mean, we want to calculate the uh uh the the let's say the um aggregated trade data with a currency conversion, right? Because well, there are different currencies, and we want to do some conversion, right? And here we show uh here we we essentially show a material a material view that can help you continuously uh continuously monitor the aggregated trade data with the currency conversion. So, uh, so where's the data input? Well, the data input could be like here. Uh, could be uh, there are two. Probably there are two data streams. One is the live data stream, and the uh, yeah, and the other one is the exchange rates, right? With well, the currency exchange rates. And so once we join the, uh, we once we join these two tables, we can essentially calculate the correct results for every single instrument, right? And this is how we do the uh, how we do that uh, a pretty simple example about what the data enrichment and the transformation. Yeah, apart from the data transformation and the enrichment, there are uh, definitely a big part of the uh upper trade stage for a big a big part, uh big use cases in the per trade stage. That is for the live transaction cost and analytics for the live or the live TCA. So basically live TCA is the, um, so you can think of it like a real time monitoring and the evaluation of the, of the cost of uh, associated with uh, executing trades, right? Because for every time we place an order, we can probably make some market impact, right? Or we can probably, we, we, uh, yeah, for, for every time we make a transaction, it's not for free, we, yeah, there are, Definitely opportunity cost, and there are time cost, and there are probably some uh, commission fees, right? So we actually need to estimate all this kind of like cost before placing a uh, placing our order or before before filing our transaction, right? So for live TCA, the live transaction cost essentially help us to determine or evaluate the cost associated with if uh, uh, associated with for the executing a trades, and. It can allow us, or, or traders, or investors, to assess the factors such as well. Okay, whether well, I mean, my trade, I may potential trade is a good one, or it could potentially lose money. Right, this is really important. And if we want to do live trading, uh, trade, uh, yeah, there are, yeah, live trade TCA is so popular that well, I believe that well, almost every single hedge fund will use that. And here uh, we can just uh, give you use a very simple example to explain how okay, how we can use the traditional or the or the general purpose stream processing system such as Rising Wave to do the I mean the live TCA. So for live TCA, let's assume that okay, we want to uh so typically there are two different types of data. One is the level two order book data. Um, so basically, a level two order book data, you can see it's more like, uh, yeah, the, da uh, the data, the live market data with more details, right? And the, the reference data, reference data, as I just mentioned, well, it's more like, okay, the, uh, yeah, the data uh, the providing, uh, providing us with some more information, such as, like, let's say, the exchange rate or some other information. And here's a query that will, I mean, that help us to, to, to to uh to do the live trading uh, live transaction cost analytics and to model the market impact this this query will i mean once we create a material basically it essentially helps us to understand the order book depths and once we create a material as you this query you could run continuously and update uh, and it will the results will be kept updating as the new order book changes arrive Right. Every time a new someone 
try to fill an order, the maternity view will be updated so that we can see uh, the most recent order book depths. It's all event-based and the result will be updated by, uh, by every single event. The maternity view will maintain the uh, for the, once we create the materialized view or create this uh, so-called stream processing jobs, we will maintain the uh, we, we we the as a as a trader we can see the latest order book depth information and allowing uh allowing our algorithm to basically to to pull the current uh, depth uh, metrics in real time so that we can decide okay whether we should really put uh, we should we uh, really uh yeah basically the uh, uh, pull the trigger right to end the final of our our um our execute our transaction right so yeah and the definitely this is just a pretty simple example and people can use for this well i mean uh, for, by, based on their i mean the, their their algorithms they can determine okay how long how, uh, <coughs> the period i want to check uh, i want to check um i want to track right well whether i'm more focused on the last minute data or i'm or just a focus uh, i'm more focused on the last 30 second data right so order book steps is very important and it definitely can help, help us to understand better understand of a transaction cost. So again, well, I mean, this is more about the, uh, so again, so for the live market data and the transaction, uh, basically for the, um, for the, um, for the, uh, for the pre-trade part, the transaction, uh, the data transformation and the enrichment and the live transaction cost and analytics are very two popular stream processing use cases in the pre-trade stage. Now let's talk about the post-trade stage. We didn't really cover a lot about, okay, uh, we didn't really dive deeper into a post-trade in the first part, right? And the, what is post-trade state? So, once we, as we, as we can see, I mean, uh, traders will use their trading system to, to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to basically analyze what the market, live market data and determine whether we want to fill the transaction, right? And, uh, but well, after the, after the trade is executed, we essentially want to do more analytics, right? And so in, uh, in order to understand our performance or probably there are some other issues like risk management or probably we want to do something like, okay, compliance, right? So once people, uh, once the traders found the transaction and issue that transaction, we essentially need to do more for further analytics over data to understand our transactions. And this part will is well after the transaction, all the analytics are done after the transaction is called the post trade analytics. And for the post trade analytics, there are online analytics and offline analytics, right? For offline analytics, probably we can just do every single day, right? Well, every uh, every uh, yeah daily basis or weekly basis, we are good with that. But for now today in the, today's talk, because we are talking about stream processing, so definitely we are more focused on the online analytics part. So what we can do for the post-trade analytics and how stream processing system can help? Well, definitely let's talk about the use case. Live TCAs, they are pretty important for the uh, use cases in the post-trade stage. Why? Because we asked, well, what do we have? Uh, but uh, just like the live TCA in the pre-trade stage, but live TCA in the post-trade case can also help us to estimate the transaction cost, right? Because we have already found the transaction and we really want to understand, better understand, okay, what the transaction cost looked like, right? And we also want to understand, okay, how the transition we just made impact market. And definitely we want to have more, definitely there are many more other things we want to analyze, right? But under, uh, making the transition, a live transaction cost and analytics can definitely help us to understand our performance. And I will not, uh, yeah, repeat, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I will not show more examples uh, about what live, uh, live transaction cost, uh, live transaction cost, live TCA, right? But well, let's focus on some other use cases. Um, uh, another big use case is for the uh, in st uh, for stream processing in the post trade stage is essentially the po portfolio management. For portfolio management, what is portfolio? Well, I mean, let's say that well, I I hold ten different stocks, right? Well, I hold Amazon stock, or probably I hold IBM stock, or probably I hold Apple stock. These are all my portfolios, and. 
for the for a trading firm, they actually trade a lot of di uh they actually trade a lot of stocks or probably they trade a lot of like across different asset mass uh, asset classes. They essentially want to analyze their portfolio's positions, right? Such as, well, I mean, how their uh, portfolio's composition, right? The percentage of the uh, percentage of my portfolio that belongs to a technology sec a sector, right? Well, I, I really want to analyze that. And I probably also want to analyze, my, okay, my, my return, right? Well, my, uh, yeah, uh, my, uh, my, my performance, whether I'm losing money or I'm earning money in real time. And I would definitely want to have uh, to do more things like uh, uh, estimate my risk. If I lose a lot of money, I'll probably I yeah there are a, a, a lot of factors. I want to I want to analyze okay whether I'm exposed to the risks potential risks. And if you are hedge funds, you actually need to yeah yeah about the compliance right. Well everyone, yeah I probably I'm not an expert in this compliance part, but definitely we have to understand that well for every single hedge fund there are, there are a lot of compliance they actually have to obey. So essentially for uh for stream processing uh, uh for in the post trade part stream processing can help you to analyze your portfolios well, in real time so in order to uh yeah basically analyze all uh, portfolio positions for uh, performance risk exposure and uh, to satisfy uh, to satisfy all compliance and to understand where there is any risk right well, we're exposed to uh, uh yeah yeah we we yeah we yeah there are yeah, there's any risks. So how do we do post uh, portfolio management? Typically, if we want to do portfolio management, then we essentially join two different types of data. One is the live market data, and the other one is the order data. So live market data is essentially the basically the st stock text, right? And order data is essentially, okay, what kind of transactions are we just made over the last, I don't know, yeah, uh, today's, right? Well, the basically the transaction, the history, right? And for stream processing, what we typically do is that we join the market data with other data and then generate the, I mean, the portfolio, uh, uh, also called a probably, probably a portfolio management table, right? Here in this, uh, in this slide, I just showed you a table with the total portfolio value shoe, right? Here, uh, as you can see, uh, in this table, we can, uh, we can capture the the I mean the quantity of the securities that we hold and the price, right, and the and probably the market value, right. We can do this well in real time. And if you are doing high frequency trading, and if you are hedge fund, uh, I mean you are doing let's say millions of transactions per every single day, you definitely want to capture all these kind of informations within probably seconds. Uh, um, in order to identify any kind of like risks or probably identify your positions or, or your, your understand your trade performance in real time. That's pretty important. And, uh, uh, and start us, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> that's a pro uh, for portfolio management. And the other part is the compliance and risk management. For the compliance and risk management, and I just mentioned, well, I mean, for portfolio management, well, it actually covers some part, type of the risk exposure and the compliance uh, 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 yeah, uh, management. But compliance and risk management, well, I mean, there are in some trading firms, they essentially have their uh, independent compliance and risk management system. And they probably have a lot of rules to determine, okay, whether they uh, whether they satisfy all kinds of compliance, right? I will not cover this a lot, but well, I mean, uh, but you can basically understand that well, it's, um, in this kind of like use cases, we essentially set up a lot of rules to in order to determine okay, whether there are some risks in our real time. <clears throat> so. So these are all the use cases well, I just mentioned. Oh, no, no, not all, definitely not all. There are probably many other use cases, but th these are definitely very classic use cases that uh, that we uh, we need uh, yeah, we typically do um in the in in hedge fund to help them to trade the stocks, right? Or to, or to trade uh, to trade the securities, right? But then let's talk about the brokerages and the exchanges. And brokerages exchanges are in essentially the counterparties for the hedge funds, right? The counterparts are uh, basically the yeah for stock uh for hedge funds they 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 place an order while the uh, brokerage and the exchanges to help them to match order and uh, basically to to deal with the transactions, right? So for the brokerage, well brokerage, well, what's the difference between brokerages and exchanges? 
So as a uh, as a as an individual, I do not really place my order in exchanges. I essentially uh, I essentially buy and sell stocks uh, through brokerage, right? Like Robinhood, like probably Weibo, like some other platforms, right? We if it's in my app, right? And um, and brokerage will essentially help people to route the orders. They help us to route the orders to exchanges and to or probably to some other places, uh, such as Daku, so, yeah, some other places. So uh, in order to help us to get a best price for the uh, for my transaction. Well, exchanges are the places where the venues where the order uh, essentially uh, executed. That's the difference between the brokerage and exchanges. And uh, brokerage and exchanges have a lot of uh, common use cases. There are different types of uh, institutions, but well, I mean, definitely there are a lot of similarities. One of the use cases, popular use cases we found is through the order management system. The order management system is a core component for, uh, for processing, let's say, requesting processing and validation, right? Well, to validate, okay, whether this request is, well, I mean, uh, is, is, is valid or not, right? And uh, it also the a component for processing the account state, market value, market value routing because right, uh, in brokerages, right? And um, and definitely it also helps us to ex uh, uh, execute what, uh, to, to do the, I mean, the reporting and to do the complex uh, order triggers, right? Let's say that's where I want to purchase one million uh, uh, shells of Apple. Uh, yeah, this transaction is so big that well, we actually need to split this transaction into a lot of like uh, uh, smaller transactions, right? So definitely there are a lot of like uh, complex work cases. Well, I mean, an order management system is essentially a core component for processing all these, well, I mean, yeah, requirements. And the simplest way we think about the order management system is to just think it like a messaging queue such as Kafka. Again, here, Kafka is just a simple example, right? Well, you can probably use some other systems like Pauza, probably like some yeah, um, uh, specialized uh, messaging queues in, uh, in, in financial services. But um, yeah, Kafka is just an example. And do we need to analyze the uh, and other data? Uh, other management system does have the other data, right? Do we really need to analyze the other management system data? Well, definitely. Analyzing order management data is crucial as it helps us to provide, uh, I mean, the client insights because for every single brokerages and all every single exchanges, they have so many orders, right? And I have so many clients and I really, as a, as a brokerage, I do really want to understand, okay, what the, the, the basically the, um, the query pattern of the other, other, other patterns, right? Or the other pattern of a certain client, right? And I also want to enhance my order routing, right? In order to get a better price. And I also want to monitor and manage, uh, yeah, basically the order execution latency or any other latencies, right? And Rising Wave is essentially the system that can help the people to process the order data uh, to, uh, to order order management system data. And it's, it's so simple because well, I will not give a, a very concrete example here because well, it's very classic use cases for, uh, for the for message queues plus the, uh, the combination of the message queues and the, and the stream processing, right? And in fact, well, in brokerage, uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of other use cases such as fraud detection. Fraud detection is always a big part in the in brokerages and exchanges. Yeah, I, I probably don't really need to uh, mention a lot about okay why we need to do uh, fraud detection, right? Because well, there are definitely abnormal behaviors, and for example, a certain client, we actually want to identify okay whether the the, the account is just hacked or not, right? So we definitely want to do fraud detection, and in a lot of brokerages, essentially, uh, uh, yeah, especially those let's say yeah crypto ex brokerage or, or exchanges or let's say the uh, basically the mobile uh, brokerages or well, mobile apps they actually issue coupons to the uh, to their clients right they actually need to do the coupon fraud prevention in order to protect themselves right otherwise well, they probably can lose a lot of money in the fraud detection use cases what people usually do is that well, they are building the machine learning model through using the let's say the last 7 days data or probably just the last yesterday's data and train a model 
uh, to train a model and in order to detect uh, in order to detect pattern. And for stream processing, how do we use uh, uh, how it can uh, uh, yeah what kind of rules you can play for the fraud detection? Well, you can imagine that for fraud detection, what we need is a feature store. And feature store has two parts. One is the online uh, online store part for online feature transformation and all the online store. And the other part is the offline store. And for uh, for the offline store, probably you can use probably, I don't know, I mean, um, Snowflake or probably Snow Redshift, those kind of data warehouses. But if you want to do the online store part, right, for, if, uh, for the feature store, you essentially need to use a stream processing system and plus a storage system. And often people say that, well, okay, it's a streaming database, such as Rising Wave, right? And that's essentially how the stream processing system can do in the fraud detection. Basically, it can continuously transform the data into feature raw data, into features, and can help and and the user feature fit and the and then the behavior uh, and the system can uh, feed the features into their let's say machine learning models in our, uh, so as to detect okay whether it's a fraud or not right so this is a stream processing and fraud detection what about uh, some other use cases well definitely there are many more use cases uh, uh, one simple example is the the market data alerts. If you uh, if you are running a let's say a uh, uh, let's say a fintech company, you will know that you essentially need to uh, uh, alert your notify your uh, uh, users of the anomalies or the, of the raw market uh, real time market data, right? This is really essentially how the stream processing can work uh, can can help. So for such kind of like user notified data, uh, so the uh, yeah the uh, the notification. Typically, what we do is that's where we actually set up a bunch of rules, right? Well, as a as a uh, as a trader or as a as an investor, I probably will set a lot of rules, and and can um and in order to detect okay whether it's a uh, to help us to under, uh, understand whether it's an anomaly or not, right? And these rules can change dynamically, right? Well, today I probably care about well, the, whether the price can, yeah, some 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 rules, a set of rules. But tomorrow I probably can change the rule, or even I can probably change the rule uh, within a day, right? So basically, in for 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 the market data and alerts, well, I mean this is a very predictable use case is for the classic well, stream processing or general purpose stream processing systems. So yeah, these are all the use cases for in the for the for the brokerages and exchanges, and uh, people may ask, okay, so look, is it enough that we are? Uh, I mean, all, a, a general purpose stream processing system can satisfy all these kind of use cases? Well, ideally, I mean, if you talk about the uh, uh the architecture or the or the yeah system architecture. Yeah, sure. Probably most of the stream processing systems, as long as uh, they are event driven, right? Well, they adopt the event driven architecture, they actually can satisfy the requirements. But the thing here is that in financial services, they have a lot of, uh, they are more demanding than uh, any uh, many other domains and they need specialized functionalities. What are these functionalities? Well, first of all, as of joins. SL join help us to basically to do uh, uh, deep analytics over different times time serves data, right? So if I have two different stocks, so let's say that well, if I have two different well, or, or set of uh, time serves data, right? I really want to do the SL joins to to uh to basically to enrich data and to do the analytics across different stock uh, stocks or securities, right? So SL join uh, were actually not included in most of the stream present systems nowadays. But well, I mean, that's something Rising Wave is well, very good at. And time travel queries, right? So whenever we, 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 come, uh, we meet people using classic stream processing system, a traditional, uh, a lots of generation stream processing system to do the, I mean, their, um, uh, yeah, to do their analytics, they typically suffer from the lacking of the time travel queries because right, it's not it's really easy to implement and uh, it essentially can uh, require uh, dedicated storage and uh, yeah, ba basically do a lot of tricks. Why we need to have time travel queries? Because we actually need to do cross-sector, uh, 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 sorry, cross-sectional analytics, right? 
And if we want to do the cross section, uh, sectional analytics, then we actually need to travel back to a certain time point and understand, okay, what's happening there at that time point. That's pretty important. Well, most of the stream process, classic stream processing system didn't really support, unfortunately didn't really support time travel queries. Well, Raging Wave is the system that helps to specialize uh, uh, and or that is specialized designed for, uh, for the time travel queries. Schema evolution, let's talk about schema evolution, right? For schema evolution, what it means, it's not just like, okay, real-time ETL, and I change up my uh, my schema in my Postgres and I want to, ref uh, and want to uh, yeah, reflect this schema into my downstream system. It's not just like that. In stock trading, or the, in the in the yeah, capital markets, the use case is uh, more, probably could, could be more complicated. I probably want to change the schema, not just a change schema, or probably I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah probably rewrite the materialized view, or probably, yeah, tweak my materialized views, right? So it's more complicated, and the rising wave is specialized in the schema evolution. And we do have articles regarding, okay, how we do schema evolution, you can check it out later. And for if we want to do the stock uh, uh, the, the stock trading, we actually need to have a lot of like time series data, uh, uh, sorry, time series analytics uh, functionalities such as gap filling, down sampling, rule up, and many others, right? So we uh, so writing wave at the moment for is currently uh, yeah it will probably uh, it will include it in the writing wave the next release for the, all these functions will be really uh, included I mean the gap filling down sampling and rule ups and many others will be re re included in probably writing wave two point two version. And when we talk about the uh, capital markets, we notice that many people actually do not really just want to use SQL. Why? Because well, they want to use Python to do all kinds of analytics, right? We have a bunch of uh, stock data, and Python has already had a lot of like building functionalities, right, to help me understand my stock data. So Rising Wave it actually essentially offers the Python uh, Python API, and through the last version, uh, through the last version of Rising Wave two point we actually released a a a, a, a package for called Rising Wave Pi. Which can help you to do uh, to do stream processing using Python. How do we do that? So let's just uh, so if you use Python, you know that okay, we want to do that data frame right, and we essentially want to use well insert and query data in data frames using SQL. Right? Anyway, if uh, this version can help you to basically to to achieve so called a data frame in and data frame out. And you can just uh, insert a data frame into Rising Wave instead of just like here uh, inserting data one by one, row by row, right? And what about the? I mean, the how, how do you define the materialized view? So I mean, probably you can define the materialized view is still in SQL, but uh, 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 but definitely whenever you fetch some data from materialized view, you no longer just get a let's say a a, a bunch of cur uh, yeah a bunch of rows. You actually can get a data frame. And another interesting, uh, interesting functionality is in, uh, provided in Rising Wave Python is uh, is a function called a subscribe, right? Basically, stream processing help you to capture the signals, right? To ca to uh, capture the alerts, and you do want to notify your uh, downstream system about uh, these changes, right? How do we do that? We essentially can can use well, the uh, yeah you essentially can use the function new functionality called a subscribe to uh, yeah to send notification to your downstream systems. That's what we can do in writing with Python. Okay, here so that's a summary of the writing with Python part, and let's uh, let's summarize. Let's do a summarize to, uh, for today's talk. So. Here, so stream processing is very popular in the it's essentially a cornerstone for this uh, for yeah capital markets for the and not just in hedge funds but also in brokerages and exchanges. In hedge funds, we can use for well, the uh, stream processing system to do both per trade and post trade analytics. And we can do live TCA. We can do basically data enrichment and uh, and the transformation. We can do probably portfolio management, and we can probably uh do something like uh, risk management, right? Uh, while in brokerages and exchanges, we can do order management, fraud detection, market data alerts, and many others. And 
not all the stream processing systems are very good at supporting the uh, specialized uh, a, a specialized to support the financial uh, uh, financial service. While well, Resume provides a well, class, uh, 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 yeah, a list of the functionalities such as time travel queries, SL joins, yeah, uh, the yeah, basically, yeah, uh, uh, UDFs and uh, let's say the Python API to help you better understand your data. Yeah. All right. That's all my talk. Thanks. Yeah. Question? Questions? Okay, Yingjun, if there are no questions, we can uh, finalize the webinar. Do you have something else to add? Oh, yeah, we I do. I have a question. Mm -hmm. The question is arriving. Yeah, we do have, uh, okay, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Let's just give him and Shu some time to type it all. Okay, Yingjun, maybe you can take a look at the chat. Uh. Uh, oh, talk about the uh, streaming data. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, this, uh, yeah, this is well pretty good. Well, the it's not just a, a question. It's essentially a pretty good comment. Well, that is well. Uh, yeah. What about the the trade fields and the cancellations? Well, um, yeah, the, basically the order of data, right? So when we talk about well, the capital markets, well, when we talk about well, the clients in the capital market world, they actually tell, tell, uh, typically will say that, okay, we probably don't really want to use table and we want to use, well, let's say the, uh, uh, yeah, a data warehouse, right? Well, we probably, uh, we do want to use a messaging queue, right? And um, why, why we want to use a messaging queue? Because well, it can capture orders. And in in stock market, uh, in stock market, well, I mean, if you start every all, everything in your table, then I mean, table is not ordered, right? But you do really want to replay, do replay, and let's say replay the lock, right? And if you want to replay a lock, you cannot just replay in a database, right? So essentially, that's why we actually have to use for well, the systems uh, like yeah, uh, Solis, like yeah, Kafka, like yeah, many others to help people to replay the locks. So, so, so all the order processing is pretty important, and uh, not just all the order processing, but the orders of the data is pretty important. And um, yes, and um, so that's typically that. That's essentially why, whenever you come, uh, you talk to the. I mean, the, whenever you are working on the capital market space, well, we actually need to have the order, the uh, all uh, basically a messaging queue first. Because it really help us to capture the order, and writing way how writing way can help. Writing way actually have the building order of order processing capability, and we and such uh, such as a watermark. You essentially can help. Uh, you essentially can define the watermark and help. Uh, and automatically manage the order of order data. Right. Well, and yeah from the upstream search uh yeah stream processing systems uh, no sorry event stream process event streaming systems or the messaging queues and we do have such kind of capability and uh yeah so for distributed solutions um yeah it could be even uh even yeah trickier I do, I do think, yeah, but well, I mean, that's something that with well, the event streaming systems or the measuring keys uh, systems need to think about. And they actually, they are pretty solid systems in the in the financial service world and not just the financial service world, but for the, yeah, let's say the Kafka world, they are definitely a bunch of great solutions. And um, yeah, I do agree that for well, the order is pretty important. And that's why people do not really use what the, I mean, traditional, uh, yeah, yeah, stock, yeah, basically the data warehouses are all of databases. They typically need to have a message queue and the stream processing system. Yes. If that is all, we can wrap up this webinar. Yeah. Any last words? Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll try out to our writing with Python, and uh, you will see that. Yeah, writing with Python is basically yeah. Uh, 
offers the data frame. And you know that your data frame can handle the uh, orders. Yeah, try it out and uh, see how order is important, how, how Redmi can get, help you guarantee the order or better understand the orders. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so you heard the message. Thank you everyone for attending. See you all next week. Bye. Yeah. Bye.